this is BSJ and this is going to be my first specific video on laning mechanics in my laning course as a carry. And in this video I really want to talk about creep aggro. So when I say creep aggro for the beginners out there what I mean by that is creeps will aggro you meaning that if you attack an enemy hero they will aggro you and run at you and attack you if you are within 500 range of them when you issue an attack command on an enemy. So what I mean by issue an attack command is that you right click them or a click them however uh, your hotkeys are set up so that in this scenario what I mean by that is if you are within 500 range of a melee or a ranged creep the creeps will attack you if you attack an enemy hero but if you start your attack command from outside of that 500 range then the creeps will not attack so what I mean by that is that if you are a thousand range from creeps and you a click a hero from a thousand range make no more further commands and walk at the hero the creeps will not aggro you unless you reissue another attack command or right click while in creep aggro range which is 500 I repeat so a lot of people especially in the lower levels think that drawing creep aggro is a bad thing and sometimes it is because generally speaking if you draw creep aggro they're going to attack you and they're going to do damage to you so they think that if you draw creep aggro then you're gonna take extra damage when you shouldn't have to and this video is really the main purpose of it is to show you some specific scenarios that I've been in and to talk about overall what the purpose of creep aggro is and how you can utilize it to maximize your landing stage as well as just overall win your lane and also secure as many last hits as possible. So I'm gonna give a brief overview of all the things that creep aggro can do, at least off the top of my head. So functions of creep aggro. First off, it can secure last hits. It can mess up enemy last hits. It can allow you to get more harass on an enemy who's going for a last hit. It can help you avoid harass and it can also help with manipulation of the creep equilibrium. So I'm going to go into each one of these in detail as much as I can. So the first one is securing last hits. So the major thing I want to say about securing last hit that I see from creep aggro, it's one of the most complicated aspects of it, but at the same time it can be simplified. At least when you're trying to understand the concepts behind it, not necessarily mastering when to do it and how to utilize it. So what I mean by securing last hits is that when a creep is low health and you aggro it towards you such that you can get the last hit when it gets close to you, then it makes it so that it's much harder for the enemy to deny the creep because the creep is running towards you and especially if they're a melee hero, they have to run further to get the last hit and sometimes they won't even be in position to get it because you pulled the creep close to you. So when it comes to manipulation of creep equilibrium when utilizing creep aggro in lane, what I mean by that is obviously if you draw the creep aggro from the enemy creeps, they're not going to be attacking your creeps. So that effectively pushes the lane. And that's something where there are times where you want to push the lane at the expense of some of your health, or even if you're a hero with a stout shield or a poor man shield with high regen, it isn't always at the expense of your health. But pushing the lane will benefit you in certain scenarios which will be talked about in other videos. But on top of that, people may think that lane equilibrium and manipulation of so, it can only be done by pulling the creeps to you and pushing the lane because that stops them from attacking. Something you can also do is if you have two range creeps, or even just one range creep in a lane that's pushing, and you don't want it to push you can utilize creep aggro to draw the enemy creeps to you so that they'll run to your range creeps so that when they de-aggro you at the end of that two and a half seconds they will attack your range creeps so that your range creeps will die uh, that is a very useful specific scenario uh, for the manipulation of creep equilibrium with when utilizing creep aggro and it's something really important to keep in mind when you're in a lane where you feel like it's pushing there's nothing you can do about it that a clicking an enemy hero and pulling the melee creeps to your range creep can help reset creep equilibrium and like i said it can also push the lane in a lane that's pushing towards you so in this first example i'm in, i'm a ju safe lane juggernaut with a solo support against a dual off lane venomancer void maybe not the most standard thing ever but it qualifies for a situation that we all run into a lot and people ask me all about where you're in a lane that's really tough and you're at disadvantage as a carry. So in this kind of lane, it's really important that you utilize creep aggro to help yourself secure last hits. And this also goes along with avoiding harass. Securing last hits and avoiding harass overlap a lot when it comes to utilizing creep aggro. So in this first wave, you're going to see what I do to start. So first thing I do is A click that, A click the Vino, and you see the creeps run straight towards me. Not only does this make it so that it's harder for him, for ranged heroes to right click me to harass me, but it also makes it slightly harder for him to get the deny. It doesn't mean it's always going to work out, and in this scenario, um, I believe I do not get the last hit. Yes, I, I mess up the last hit, but that's not the relevance here. The relevance in this scenario is that it made the Venomancer walk farther into the lane, so if I happen to have heroes that were there to help me kill him, 
uh, make it easier to kill them, but it also made him run closer to the creeps so that if he were to attack me to harass, he would take harass damage himself. If I had let the creeps stay here, where they are, where they were originally, and I had him sitting right here, then to him to attack me, it may still draw creep aggro, but instead of being right on top of the creeps and taking any amount of damage, the creeps are simply going to run to him. But with the lane situation that we're in now, this occurs for ranged, er, ranged heroes and melee heroes, you see here that if Venomancer were to attack me now, he would be right in point blank range of these melee creeps, and he will take harass himself. This is something that's really important against ranged offlaners, ranged dual lanes with the support, uh, any lane where you're against a ranged hero, honestly. Putting them in a situation where they're going to have to harass you, and you're securing last hits, they're going to have to harass you from a distance of, a me like, right in melee range of melee creeps, because that'll make them take as much or possibly more damage harassing you uh, if than they actually do to you. So we're going to keep playing it forward. And see here that even though the creeps are already close to me and the lane is not, uh, and, the, and I'm not necessarily in any particular danger in this scenario, I pull the creeps towards me again. So when I said that creeps aggro you in a 500 radius, on top of that, what also occurs is that they have a two and a half second cooldown and aggro duration. So what that means is when you aggro the creeps, they're going to chase you for two and a half seconds. This is as of 6.88. And this was recently changed, I believe, in 6.86. And, you know, may be changed in the future, but that's the only time it's been changed uh, since Dota 2's been out. But what that means is the creeps will chase you for two and a half seconds. At the immediate end of that two and a half seconds, the creeps will go back to... If there's a creep within range, they'll go attack it. So if they're within 500 range of a creep, they'll stop attacking you and go attack a creep again. If there's nothing else to attack, they're obviously going to keep attacking you because their aggro reset... And their priority is first creeps, but if there are no creeps, then they're going to attack the hero. So even though I didn't need to pull the creeps again here, I decided to because it puts me in an even safer spot. And I also don't feel in a safe spot to go up to this range creep knowing that I have no support. So I'm prioritizing my safety in a lane where I have to be more cautious, rather than prioritizing every single last hit that I can get. Once again, I pull the creep aggro to myself again making it so that they, they can't contest my last hits. I get the deny on him because my creeps, if you see what I just did there, I'll, I'll rewind just to show you exactly how that went down. I pulled the creeps towards me. My creep chases me. If he were um, doing this properly, he would have A-clicked me as well, pulling my creeps to him so that I could not deny this creep. But you see here that this is an example of superior creep aggro usage in this particular case. He has 64 base damage. I have 58. He has a hero that's helping him in lane. I know I have a line over here now, but as of now, I'm pretty much by myself. I pull the creeps towards me, and I'm able to get a deny because I have better timing on it, and I am in a good position to get that deny. So now, in a lane where I'm basically 1v2 for the time being, I'm able to secure these two last hits that aren't even in range of the enemy heroes because they're currently dealing with these creeps. It's a similar concept if you're an offlaner that is in a disadvantageous lane. Getting the creeps separated so that you're no longer contesting them for last hits. However, if you are a carry, which will outlast hit their offlaner, say I'm the carry void and they have an offlaner with 50 base damage, something maybe like a tide, it may be in your best interest to not allow that to happen, because on the complete opposite, if you're allowing it to happen, the offlaner with less base damage slash weaker laner is going to get last hits that they shouldn't get because you're letting them uh, draw the creep aggro away from you. So you see here... I'm not going to get every last hit, but I keep pulling the creeps towards me, making it so that last hits like this creep are not even contested. Another aspect of securing creep, or using creep aggro to secure last hits is also the fact that you have to think about that if the other, if your creeps are left and theirs are not, so for in this instance, they have four creeps, or I have four creeps, and they have one. When I'm concerned about what's going on in this lane, my only concern is to make this void get as few last hits as possible. So my priorities in this scenario is I can harass him as much as I want, and if he stops to harass me, he's going to be taking creep damage, right? And creeps are creeps are your friends in the laning stage. You want to use them to get that extra bit of damage earlier the game, earlier on in the game. The more damage creeps effectively do to heroes. So in this scenario, you see here that the void's going to loop back to tr attempt to get this range creep lasted, and this is something where you not only want to think about the fact that when you draw creep aggro, that you're getting attacked by their creeps. But a lot of people are going to try to set up last hits based on their creeps doing damage to your creeps. 
So by attacking them, you're actually going to potentially affect their last hitting potential because you're basically removing the flow from the lane. And what I mean by that is this melee creep, if I aggro it, will no longer attack this range creep. So in a second here, you're going to see this void try to get a last hit on this, on this range creep. And it's going to effectively um, make him spend more time getting that last hit and allow me to get harassed. So I'm going to go ahead and play the video here. He walks back into lane to get the last hit. And I draw the creep aggro here. And you see here that he spends an extra attack killing that range creep. I get a lot of harass damage on him. And this is something that's not always going to happen, okay? It's not with the... This isn't something you do only with that plan. But a lot of people don't understand that kills that happen early are set up. That they don't just happen. If that void wasn't forced to time walk there because of all the harass damage that I gave to him, then the, ne the kill that you're about to see is not going to happen. So I forced him to use time walk in a scenario that isn't ideal for him, only to get a range creep. And you saw there the range creep had barely lived. Um, through one melee creep worth of health, and that's what I mean by using the aggro to mess up enemy last hits. And now you see here that I have an oracle rotating behind a void with no time walk and a lane that really we shouldn't have all that much kill potential in. And now we're able to get a kill on this void because of that. So it's creep aggro not only secured me last hits in this lane, but it also made him have a harder time getting last hits, made him take more harass, and then actually cost him his death this time, and that's the extreme, but this is not something that is unfamiliar when utilizing creep aggro. Utilizing creep aggro will force he heroes in positions that they don't want to be in, um, ideally, and creating chaos in the lane will make players uncomfortable, and you'll find them much more often out of position because of the way that you're approaching the lane. When it comes to using creep aggro aggressively, what I mean by that is that creep aggro will force people to do what they don't want to do, meaning they'll go out of position in order to get CS, they'll go out of position in order to secure a CS, or they'll go out of position to even to get an XP range. So by forcing them to do things that they don't want to do, you're actually able to be more aggressive in lane. And the example you saw with the ability to kill Void because he was forced to time walk going for that CS is a perfect example of how creep aggro abuse can allow you to be aggressive in a lane on a hero with high kill potential, and even in a lane where you might not believe you have kill potential but people will be forced out of their comfort zone even in the lower mmrs the more you throw the lane off for somebody the more aggressive it'll allow you to be because you'll basically be forcing mistakes that they're because they're not used to dealing with it and it's something that still occurs at the highest level of dota and that's when you see people getting outplayed in lane and most of the time it's actually set up by a lot of little outplays that are based off of creep aggro abuse that end up winning them the CS battle and then turn into the other hero basically getting desperate to get levels or last hits where they will do things that they wouldn't otherwise want to do, putting themselves in a jeopardized position afterwards. So the concepts that I talked about in this video for the laning phase are, while very specific in the games that I showed you, are general concepts that I want you to be able to apply to the max in your pub games. And it's something where in the future I will be making more videos on more specific, maybe lane matchup based creep aggro abuse, as well as things near the tower and in different ranged versus melee or melee versus ranged or ranged versus ranged matchups. Creep aggro abuse will be different than the games I just showed now. So in this replay here, I'm a Terrorblade against an offlane of Bad and Sand King. Another untraditional offlane, at least, you know, by by my standards. You know, I've heard of all kinds of things that people run into at uh, whatever tier of Dota that they happen to be in. But this is another example of a lane where I'm against a dual lane that, you know, Caustic Finale, for all of you, those who don't know, is extremely deadly to melee heroes so it's something where if i'm even in range of the sand king getting a last hit even if i get the deny i'm going to be tanking 90 damage uh level one if he gets if i'm within range so this is a lane where creep aggro is super important because otherwise i won't be getting any cs as a terror blade in this lane so keep in mind that going into this lane in every pub, you're not going to know exactly what you're up against. You know, obviously the minute that I see that it's a Sand King and a, and a Baden, I know what's in my lane. But, you know, for me, I assumed it was a support Sand King with an offlane of Baden. So that's why I went first item Poor Man's Shield. But that doesn't mean that I have to approach, that I have to, that I'm upset about my items, rather than I just have to approach the lane differently, because now that I see the Sand King. And it's really important, especially at the highest level, to address immediately what your offlaner is, and like how that affects the creep aggro usage in the lane that you're going to be in. Like I said earlier, there are times where creep aggro, drawing it to yourself passively is bad because you are actually the stronger laner. Heroes that are usually like this can potentially be Terrorblade. Uh, heroes such as uh, Lifestealer are really strong in lane. Void is really high base damage. Uh, Juggernaut's a pretty strong carry in most scenarios, especially if you have uh, more supports, like if it's a 2v1 or a 3v1. Um, these kind of heroes are the ones in Ursa I include as well. 
he, these kind of heroes are the ones that creep aggro passive usage can be really bad and that's why in some and later on in this video i'm going to talk about aggro or uh, aggressive creep aggro usage so here what you're going to see is i immediately recognize i draw creep aggro to myself one time it goes off for two and a half seconds i get chased by the sand king you see it here i'm gonna i keep pausing and you see that I get chased by the Sand King. Look at this position of the lane. He wants to, he knows what he needs to do. He wants to he wants to uh, kill my creeps in range of me so that he does damage with Caustic Finale. He's already leveled it. So you see here that I creep aggro. They aggro back to the creeps. So after the two and a half seconds, the creeps went back to my creeps. And then I aggroed them again. Pulling them even farther away from the Sand King. Actually securing this last hit without range of Caustic Finale doing any damage. In these kind of lanes, it's ideal that you want to get the range creep. But it's something where, like I said, if I were to walk up to get that range creep, Sand King could have really harassed me. And it's not worth the amount of damage that I would have taken to do so. So in these kind of lanes, you just have to be willing to take the sacrifices that you can get. But the fact is, if I'm able to secure two or maybe three of the melee creeps, that's a one lane in a scenario where I'm not supposed like, theoretically, a lot of players would not be able to farm very well because they don't use creep aggro. So notice how I keep pulling the creep aggro towards me. He's shielded. I don't want to contest that. I just keep pulling it back towards me. Every time that two and a half second cooldown from the creep aggro resets, I have to re-A-click uh, the Sand King or any hero on the map, theoretically. But in this scenario, I just keep pulling the creep aggro. And that's something where you have to be familiar with the timing in your head. It's two and a half seconds. You know, it's not the best to just count it out. It's good to just get a feel for it. And I keep pulling the creeps. So now, if Sand King were to theoretically try to contest the last hits that I brought to my next creep wave, which first off, I also ensure that they're outside of tower range so that they are not hard to last hit. He has to walk through a lion as well as two of my creeps. So if he wanted to contest this deny that I'm, or this last hit that I'm about to get and try to deny it, he's going to tank a lot more damage than he would want to ideally, and I'm going to be coming out on top of it, on top of that trade. So in this scenario, Creep Aggro has secured me two last hits without even getting contested. Obviously, I missed that last hit, but that's the the whole point is I set myself up for success, and timing is something that you just have to work on an individual. And there are times where Creep Aggro will make you miss last hits because it really does uh, mess with the lane equilibrium and overall uh, pace of the lane that you it's hard it's hard to get used to sometimes. And notice how the Creep Aggro there actually put his range creep out of range of his ability to get the last hit, and I actually got a deny in a lane that I really don't think I should be getting very many denies in. But notice it's just the constant approach. There's a lot of lanes that you just don't want to be close to ever. So the first thing I do is when I get the chance is I walk up and A-click the Sand King. You're going to see it again here. That's an A-click of the Sand King. Draw the creep aggro to myself. The creep's low. And I actually, I get denied there, but I set myself up to more, more likely get that last hit. It's not going to work out every single time, but I wouldn't have gotten that last hit anyway. So I get that last hit. And I'm actually able to get this denied because of the creep aggro here. He's not even able to contest because he has to worry about getting these two creeps rather than the one up uh, one up in the lane. Because if he goes for this one, he's going to miss the two creeps that are dying to his creeps. So it's all about in a lane that you're slightly disadvantageous, even a lane that you are ahead, is making the enemy have to choose rather than getting everything they want out of the lane. Um, this is The reason why this applies more to lanes where they're ahead, or they have a better lane, is because they should ideally be able to get more out of the lane than you do. And by letting them harass you, get the last hits and denies all in one is how you lose a lane. So effectively, I'm removing some of their options in, options in this scenario. So one really important point I want to make for being an aggressive uh, creep aggro use is not necessarily always about using the creep aggro in order to be aggressive, but having creep aggro in mind when being aggressive. This is especially important on um, range carries because range carries, uh, generally speaking, because they don't carry stout shields, can uh, take a lot more damage from creeps. So it's really important that you tank creeps as little as possible comparatively to melee carries uh, with stout shields. So here I'm on Weaver and I just want to show you a brief tip that uh, is a really big deal in my opinion that a lot of people don't consider and it actually took me a really long time to consider. In this example what I want to show you is right at the start of the lane is that when I am going to A click the Omni Knight which is going to draw the creep aggro to my hero. You're going to see it right at the beginning here. I'm positioning myself on the side of the creep wave as far away from the creeps as possible such that when I do aggro the creeps themselves, it actually takes them a very long time to travel to me so that it almost takes the entire two and a half seconds of aggro to get to me. So either they hit me once or not at all, which basically makes it so that even though I'm drawing the creep aggro to attack this Omni Knight, I'm actually not taking any damage. As you see there, I get the one creep. 
and then I let the creep aggro back. So I walked past the creeps and now you see because of what I did with the first wave, I drew the aggro to this range creep. It makes it so that the Omni Knight, if he wants to be in range of this XP, is going to have to be closer to the range creep, like we've talked about in, a, in the more passive way of approaching the lane for ourselves. So in this case, making it so that I can be much more aggressive by pulling the aggro to my creep, making sure I get these two melee creeps back, and so now that my creep wave is pushing my way, I can afford to t uh, have the creeps be more aggro to me, and then be able to be more aggressive on this Omni Knight. So you see, he might—he wasn't even in XP range for that range creep there. Not only did he not, did he get the, did we, I missed the deny, but he actually wasn't in range for the XP itself. Notice here I go past the creep wave in order to harass Omni Knight. This is something unique to Invis heroes or some ranged heroes. You can also do it with pretty much any hero, but it's easiest with heroes that are high mobility. Is pretty much what it boils down to. I hope you enjoyed this video on the specifics of creep aggro and how you can use them to further your advantage in lanes or get more out of lanes which seem to be to your disadvantage. And I hope you're able to take the specific examples that I gave as well as the general concepts that I talked about and apply them to your pub games.